Hey everybody, today we've got some pretty cool news coming out of Midjourney regarding 3D. But, you know, don't get too excited. It's not released yet. We're just going to go over what we know about it so far. I've got some AI news coming out of Adobe, plus a new AI music generator from Stability. All that, plus we're going to take a look at the latest updates to Runway and Pika on the AI video generation side. Okay, let's dive in. So in this week's Midjourney Office Hours, there was some discussion about the 3D feature that they will be implementing soon. So there were no Office Hour notes this week, uh, which is why I think that you're not seeing a lot of coverage about this week's Office Hours. But luckily at Nick Floats was in attendance and covered it for us. Nick noted that the team feels that the 3D stuff is looking really good and Midjourney CEO David Holtz is really excited about it. David was quoted as saying, Make something 3D, zoom the camera around, change camera angles. Meshes are not the focus. It's more about being able to move around the space. The current version of the Midjourney 3D model does generate a mesh, but they're optimizing around the general quality of reflections and transparency, and they're more focused on the light field effects like a nerf. Also over on X, at Smoke Away, well, if you got him, uh, noted that Midjourney wants 3D to be like upscale, except it makes the images 3D without any loss of quality. Continuing that the prioritization on Midjourney side is not 3D meshes, but rather getting a sense of space with reflections and transparency and volumetric light, basically being able to sort of navigate around a space. This does sound very mid-journey to me, as David has mentioned a few times in the past that they see themselves as the Apple of AI image generation. I personally think that mid-journey 3D is probably gonna be more like camera controls within your image, as in you can rotate and move around and explore the space within your image, and less about being able to download a 3D model and bring it into 3D software package like uh, Blender. And once again, at Nick Float reports that this all might be happening sooner than you think. It was also reported, once again by Smoke Away, that the team is very confident about the video model and believes that it is better than any other video model out there. That is pretty exciting to hear, and we'll be taking a look at some of the updates that have been made to those current video models in just a little bit. But first, let's take a quick run through of everything else that was mentioned via Alley Jewels. Version 5.3 may or may not happen. Uh, we may just be getting incremental updates as things are released. These include an updated aesthetic system that will make images a little more on the plain side, but will be more responsive to your text prompts. I, I think of this a little bit like raw mode. They've also been discussing this personalized aesthetic quiz that we can take, uh, where Midjourney will begin delivering outputs that are preferred to our unique tastes. Version six claims to have a bigger performance jump than there was between version four and version five. And I don't know if you guys remember, but that was a pretty remarkable leap. Version six will upscale up to 2048 by 2048, which is really pretty impressive, but there are no dates on when version six will release. Although the website apparently will be launching fairly soon. They rolled out a roadmap of what the website will end up looking like. The initial version of it will be more or less like the website version we currently have, in which you will not be able to generate images on it, but it will have an improved system in which you can explore and you can navigate the images that you've generated over all this time. The second phase of the website will consist of that, plus the ability to generate images and a social component. Now they have mentioned that the website version is going to be more limited in terms of tool sets than the Discord version. I'll talk a little bit more about that in just a minute, but just rounding out, the third phase will apparently contain tools to be able to help you find styles that you like. So despite the fact that the website is launching soon, it has been stated numerous times that Midjourney will remain on Discord. Uh, Discord themselves probably does not want Midjourney going anywhere, considering that Midjourney apparently is responsible for 14.8 million people joining. David Holtz has mentioned that the website will be, I, I don't want to call it a watered down version, maybe like a simplified version of the Midjourney experience. For power users, I presume most people that are watching this that want access to all the commands uh, will still be on Discord. Moving over to Adobe News, uh, apparently Firefly is now out of beta. I don't necessarily know how newsworthy this is, but it is now officially out of beta and you can use it for commercial purposes. 
But more interestingly, they also announced a few beta features in Adobe After Effects and Premiere. In Premiere, we apparently have a new AI-powered enhanced audio feature. Let's take a quick listen to hear how the new audio enhance sounds. This is what my audio sounds like before using enhanced speech, and this is what my audio sounds like after. So if that sounded a little familiar, it is because it is pretty much Adobe Podcast, the uh, free audio cleanup tool that Adobe has available. Uh, there's a link to that down below. I have used it in the past. It does a really, really pretty solid job. The beta will also add some improvements to Adobe Premiere's text-based editing, which allows you to cut video as easily as you do a Word document. Also announced in beta is a new enhanced Rotobrush tool for After Effects. This one is a little underwhelming to me, considering that there have been third-party plugins that have been doing this for a while, and even Runway ML's Roto tool seems to be better functioning than After Effects. But it's good to see them, I guess, more or less catch up. In AI audio news, Stability have released Stable Audio, a AI text to music or audio generator. Stable Audio has the ability to create up to 90 second songs that can be used commercial free. That said, as of this video, which is a day after it launched, uh, Stable Audio is broken. So we might wanna work on that name a little bit. I did manage to get in early this morning and got one generation off. So let's go check that out real quick. So this was a lo-fi hip hop beat with jazzy piano and bass, mellow calming vibe with nighttime city atmospheres. And this is what stable audio generated. So yeah, not too bad. I could definitely see that fitting in on some Spotify lo-fi playlist. So we'll definitely circle back to stable audio once it is a little more stable. But if you are interested in this sort of thing, I just did a video on using AI to crate dig for samples, uh, utilizing Suno in which we generated this. There are things I should do, but I know it's just no use. And then turned it into this. If you're interested in checking out that video, it is down below. Rounding out with some AI video updates, Runway has released what I guess they're calling it director mode, which allows you to have camera control and motion control in your Gen 2 outputs. So taking a quick look, we're gonna take this mid-journey cowboy, or maybe he's an arsonist, I'm not sure which. Bringing him into Gen 2, uh, we have our motion slider in which we can, can control the intensity of the motion. So let's try cranking it up to seven, see what happens, and then Additionally, we have custom camera controls in which we can choose horizontal, vertical, a zoom in, a roll, uh, and then the actual speed of it as well. So let's try a zoom out to see what happens. And after a few moments, our camera is now pulling back on our arsonist cowboy. Not to be outdone, Pika also released similar controls allowing you to pan up, down, left, right, or zoom in and out. So taking our same cowboy output, giving him a motion of three and a camera zoom out, we get this. Also, if you're interested in Pika or you haven't tried it, I just did a full deep dive tutorial, like everything you need to know beginning to end on Pika uh, that was released yesterday. I'll have the link to that below. So that's it for today. I thank you for watching and I thank our supporters for supporting. My name is Tim.